Right, so um, I've been really interested in a lot of the stuff that you've been saying about dreams because I've been lucid dreaming a lot for many years, but always in a sort of atheistic way, it's sort of like a game or something like that. But um, because of seeing your talks and everything, I've started to think of it from a different perspective, like you're now interfacing with something beyond the narrow scope of your conscious awareness that, or, or something like that, maybe mythological or maybe something like God. And so what I've been thinking about and what I maybe wonder what you think about is that in some ways when you're lucid dreaming you're kind of trend, you're getting beyond the limitations of an ordinary dream, you're sort of transcending limitations which maybe is like it's not the purpose of people, right? It's because as a person you're supposed to be limited in some ways and how but on the other hand it's a good opportunity to kind of have control over your interactions with this like very special and like interesting thing so i guess the conundrum is that on one hand like you can you can control your interactions but on the other hand like you are controlling them so i guess i'm wondering what do you think about that and also just in general what do you think about lucid dreaming as a thing that should you do i had a client who could really lucid dream you know and one of the things she used them now and then to solve problems, even though she didn't always pay attention to the answer. Sometimes she did. She, one of her, in one of her dreams, one of the characters told her that she would have to learn to live in a slaughterhouse. She was very afraid of life. And one of the consequences of that was that we went and watched an embalming. So, so the dreams were, but one of the things she did, she'd ask the characters what they were up to. You know, she, she was, instead of controlling, she would inquire. And so, but I don't know what to say about lucid dreaming beyond that. Like, I know it's a well-documented phenomena and many people can do it. And women seem to be able to do it better than men. That's what the research indicates. But I think that what we don't know about lucid dreaming could fill a lot of books. So I think you do, there is some danger in controlling it, I think, because you lose the spontaneous revelation, although not completely, because you can't control it completely. But I like, you see, you might be interested in reading Jung's works on active imagination, because he kind of learned to dream when he was awake. And he spent a lot of time in the world of imagination when he was awake. The Red Books, for example, the Red Book is a, is a document of his experiences with awake dreaming. But he was very interactive with the dream, you know, instead of trying to bend it to his whim or his will. He was, he was exploring it, it's in some sense like you'd explore a video game, you know, which are forms of dreams in and of themselves. So, yeah, I would say do it with an exploratory purpose in mind. And you could always ask yourself what you could learn too, which is a very dangerous question to ask a dream, because sometimes you'll find out what you have to learn. That's not so pleasant. But it's really worthwhile. Okay, yeah.